السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأوفوا بعهدي أوف بعهدكم وإياي فرهبون وآمنوا بما أنزلت مصدقا لما معكم ولا تكونوا أول كافر به ولا تشتروا بآياتي ثمنا قليلا وإياي فاتقون ولا تلبسوا الحق بالباطل وتكتموا الحق وأنتم تعلمون وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة واركعوا مع الراكعين أتأمرون الناس بالبر وتنسون أنفسكم وأنتم تتلون الكتاب أفلا تعقلون واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين الذين يظنون أنهم ملاقوا ربهم وأنهم إليه راجعون صدق الله العظيم Starting from ayah number 40 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting an special invitation to the previous nation Invitation to Bani Israel Ya Bani Israel O children of Israel Remember my favors over you وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِي أُوْفِي بِعَهْدِكُمْ And fulfill your promise to me I will fulfill my promise to you وَإِيَّايَ فَرْهَبُونَ And fear none but me وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ And believe in what I have revealed, confirming what is already with you. وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَ كَافِرٍ بِهِ And do not be the first to deny it, to reject it. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِي ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا and do not sell my book for a trivial price. وَإِيَّايَ فَاتَّقُونَ And fear me alone. وَلَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ And do not confound truth with falsehood. وَتَفْتُمُ الْحَقِّ And do not hide the truth. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ In spite of knowing. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ And establish salah and pay zakah. وَأَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Do rukur with those who do rukur. Bow down with those who bow down to me. This message, the main, the main address is to Bani Israel. Ya Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling Yahud, Jews. Israel is Ya'qub alayhi salatu wa salam. Ya'qub alayhi salatu wa salam, second name is Israel. Ya'qub alayhi salatu wa salam, as we know, he was the son of Ishaq alayhi salatu wa salam. Ishaq alayhi salatu wa salam was the son of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam had many children, two of them are well known, Ishaq and Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam. And Ya'qub alayhi salatu wassalam is the son of Ishaq alayhi salatu wassalam. And from the other side, Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam had no prophet in his progeny until the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the only prophet that came from the side of Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam. That's another history we will talk about it, inshallah when we get into the story of Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu wassalam. 
But here I just wanted to remind that Bani Israel are the children of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. Israel is Yaqub alayhi salam, so his children are the children of Israel. And the first children of Israel that we know about is Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam and his eleven brothers. So, uh, all the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, all of these are the, uh, they, they are, they are beneath Israel, they are the children of Israel. Then all the community of Yahud and originally Jews that finally converted into Christianity, which Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, was one of them. Remember, Isa alayhi salam was born in a Jewish community. He was beneath Israel. And he was born into a Jewish community. And then, Isa alayhi salam, as he received the prophethood, and he invited those people, his own people, to believe in him. So, at that time when Isa alayhi salatu was salam came, he completed and perfected the message of the Ibn Musa alayhi salatu was salam, and then all the changes that were made in that being, in that religion, he corrected it, and at the same time, things that were that were made too difficult in the uh, deen of Musa alayhi salatu was salam because sometimes when Israel were bringing too many objections and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just give them a very difficult ruling because of their objections because of the stubbornness so Isa alayhi salam came to fix those things and all the very difficult orders he changed them to more simpler ones so at that time, that was the true deen, the true religion to follow, the teachings of Jesus, the teachings, teachings of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Bani Israel, we need to remember two very important things over here. Whenever the address comes to Bani Israel, or not just the address, whenever the ayahs talk about Bani Israel, one is that these ayahs are referring to Jews, and the original Christians. Bani Israel, original Christians of Isa alayhi salam was sent to those people. Number two, these ayahs that talk about Bani Israel or about Jews and Christians in Quran, they refer to the believers of that time. So don't take them as disbelievers. The ayahs that talk about Bani Israel they don't refer to them as disbelievers. Remember this, very important to remember that these ayahs are talking about the believers of that time. Just like at this time, we are supposed to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the believers of these days. Same thing, the believers of those days during the time of Musa alayhi salam, the believers were the followers of Musa alayhi salam. The, during the time of Isa alayhi salam, the believers were the followers of Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Why is it important to remember this? So that we can understand that when these type of ayahs are addressing us and Allah is conveying that message to us, we don't look at it, the ayahs is about disbelievers. The ayahs are about the believers and then Allah is telling us the same rule applies to you. That is the real message behind it. That the same rule applies to you. And you need to take lesson from that, that if Bani Israel were the believers of the time, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them with so many anbiya, He sent so many prophets, and yet, when they rejected the message of Allah, when they rejected the book of Allah, and when corruption came into that community, into those people, then Allah punished them. So Allah is telling us, you need to understand, the same rule will apply to you. Keeping that in mind, now we will go further to study these ayahs. Ya Bani Israel, Udhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum. O children of Israel, remember my favors that I have bestowed upon you. My favors over you. Allah has done 
special favor to Bani Israel at that time. What are those favors? Quran talks in detail about some of those favors. For example, sending over 100,000 prophets in Bani Israel. There were times when there would be prophets one after another in Bani Israel. That's the way we have Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, that's the way this ummah has scholars, Bani Israel used to have prophets. As many number of scholars you could have at a time, this is how they used to have prophets at a time. In some days, the some time of the history of Bani Israel, they had 70 prophets amongst them at the same time. But unfortunately, the history tells us all 70 of them were killed at the same time too. And not only just the 70, all of their followers and their supporters were killed also. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كَانَتْ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلَ تَسُوسُهُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ Bani Israel's situation was, always Allah would send anbiya to lead them. كُلَّمَا هَلَكَ نَبِيٌّ تَبِعَهُ أَخَرٌ Whenever a prophet would die, another prophet would come. Then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَأَنَا خَاتَمُ النَّبِيِّينَ I am the seal of the prophet, no more prophets will come into my ummah. So naturally the question from Sahaba's side was in their mind. He didn't wait until they would spill it out and they would ask that what will happen to this ummah now if Bani Israel were having prophets one and after another. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, وَأَنَا خَاتَمُ النَّبِيِّينَ I am the seal of the prophethood. No more prophets. Then he answered that question too. He said, then al-ulama'u wa rafatu al-anbiya. Scholars of this ummah will be the inheritors of anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam. وَإِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ لَمْ يُوَرِّثُوا دِينَارًا وَلَا بِرْهَمًا Inheritance of Anbiya doesn't mean that they would take the money and the clothing and the house of Anbiya alayhi wa sallam of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. إِنَّمَا وَرَّثُ الْعِلْمِ The inheritance of Anbiya is the ilm, is the knowledge of deen. And everyone takes it according to his capacity and his connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is this ilm that we learn, and it's not a scholar, it doesn't mean that any people with certificates. Real scholars are people who learn the deen and have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Ulama are the ones who fear Allah. It's not the person who just learned a lot of knowledge, a lot of degrees and certificates and doesn't fear Allah. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that just the way we have ulama in the ummah that would lead the ummah, they used to have anbiya that used to lead them, one after another. This is a great favor. What a great favor of Allah that you always have a prophet amongst you. Then, we know how they were being tortured by Fir'aun. And ayahs are coming inshallah that will talk about some of that hardships they were going through on the hands of Fir'aun. But we all know that how he was taking them like slaves. And then killing their boys, leaving their daughters alive. So that when they grow up, they would use these girls. What a humiliation! And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them out of that situation through Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. When these people had no land, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Udkhulu al-ard al-muqaddasa. Go to the sacred land and I will give that to you. They had no food in the desert. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent food from Jannah. وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى The food from Jannah used to come for them. A lot of favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ O children of Israel, اُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةِ يَلَّتِي يَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ The word zikr in Arabic language has two meanings. One is to remember something with your tongue, to mention it, to talk about it. This is zikr. This is a form of zikr. So a person who says, La ilaha illallah, this is the zikr of Allah. He's saying it with his tongue. The other form of zikr is to remember something in your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them 
اُذْ كُرُوا نِعْمَتِي Remember my favor. See, we translate it as remember. See, the problem is in English language you can cover one of the two. Either you say remember or you would say talk about. But in Arabic it means both. Remember and let people know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done great favors over us. Don't just keep on complaining. That this is, we went through this, we went through this, and this is the hardships, and these are the difficulties. Talk about the good things. Talk about the name of Allah too. Remember my favors over you. And fulfill the promise that you made with me. I will fulfill the promise that I made with you. What promise Allah made with them and they made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the book, He gave them Torah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a promise with them that if you take this book and follow the book properly, follow it fully, hold strongly to this book, خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ Hold to it strongly. If you do that, I guarantee you the Jannah. They promised Allah, Ya Allah, we promise whatever you say and you said in this book, whatever you have mentioned in this book, we will always go by that. Their promise was to hold to the book of Allah. And Allah's promise, in return of this, I will give you the Jannah. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them. Now you have to pay attention to what's happening here. Allah is reminding them that remember your favor, your promise. If you say, I do remember, then doesn't your book talk about this prophet? Your book does talk about this prophet. So, Alfu bi'ahdi, promise the, fulfill the promise that you made with me, I will fulfill the promise I made with you. You fulfill the promise. Keep up to that promise. Follow your book, which means follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I will fulfill my promise. I, will, I guarantee you the Jannah. You follow him, I guarantee you the Jannah. But if you don't follow him, that's it. You broke your promise with me. Then you are not getting anything. This ayah is very clear that people of the previous scriptures have to believe in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Quran al Karim. They have to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it was a promise taken from them at that time not only from people imagine the promise was taken even from Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam. This promise was taken from Anbiya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيْتَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِنْ سَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ Allah took this covenant from all the Anbiya. What covenant is taken from Anbiya? لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابِ مِنْ كِتَابِ وَحِكْمَةِ That once I give you the book and I give you the wisdom, the hikmah, which means all the information through the wahi. ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُ النَّبِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُ النَّهِ Then when my prophet would come, who is my prophet? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When that prophet would come, if you are alive at that time, you have to believe in him and you will have to be his supporter. Then don't say I'm a prophet and people are my followers and I'm going to have my own position and he can have his position. No, the covenant is taken from all Anbiya. If Allah, if Allah would send Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during your time, then you have to be one of the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This shows us the status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst all the Anbiya. So Bani Israel, they had promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they would follow everything in the book. And one of the things that was in the book is to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is what Allah is reminding them that now you are supposed to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah as He is reminding them promise 
He's telling them, whatever I guaranteed you, you would get it only if you fulfill your promise. Otherwise, you're not getting it. Then, وَإِيَّايَ فَرْهَبُونَ He's reminding them, you should fear me alone. Why? See, remember the position of Bani Israel. People, those scholars, those rabbis and leaders of the community who have been teaching their people that book, Torah, and everything according to the book, according to their understanding of that religion, all of a sudden, if they would go out and tell people, that's it, this is all aggregated, this is obsolete, now we have to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is a big fear that these people would kill me right away. People are not willing to hear anything like this. Now you are telling us that we will give up all of this and we follow this person. This is not happening. This is not possible. There is no way that we will do anything like this. So every person had his own reason mentioning something that he fears something. You know, what will happen to everyone? What people would say? What will be people's reaction? What if people would go against me? وَإِيَّا فَرْهَبُونَ Fear me alone. Don't worry about all of these things. Many times we are, we know what the haq is. We know what the truth is. We are afraid to say, why? My position in the community. I will lose my position. People will say, you know, he is fighting by this. People will say, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. People will say that this is too difficult. We can't accept it and this is why we will reject this person too. So, we are not ready to say the haq. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Don't worry about anything. وَإِيَّا فَرْهَبُونَ Fear me alone. Don't fear anything else. وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ And believe in what I have revealed. Which means you must believe in this Qur'an. So believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and believe in Qur'an. We see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is requiring Bani Israel that they must believe. They must believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they must believe in Qur'an. And this is again a message that we are afraid to say these days. And believe in what I have revealed. Musaddiqan lima ma'akum. Confirm what is with you. This Quran confirms the book that you have. It doesn't go against it. What a beautiful way of presenting it and telling us something about Quran that normally we don't pay attention to. Quran does not reject the previous books. Quran does not teach us to reject all the other books of Allah. In fact, it confirms all of those books. But it confirms the original ones. It doesn't confirm the present one. It confirms the original one. That Musa a.s. received Torah. That Torah is more respectable to us than anyone respecting their own book. Believe me, if we have the original Torah, if we have the original Injil, we would respect that book in a form, in a way, that these people would not even think about that how this, how Muslims would respect this book. We will not be putting it towards our back, behind our backs in the places of worship. We will not put it on the ground. We will not put, take it into the bathroom. These books are respectable to us. We honor, we respect all of these books. So, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ Quran confirms all the books that came before us. وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَ كَافِرٍ بِهِ Do not be the first ones to reject it. Question. Who were the first people who rejected Quran? Or who rejected Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The people of Quraysh. Yahud were in Medina. Why Allah is saying to Jews in Medina, don't be the first ones to reject it. Because when someone has knowledge about a field, when he rejects it, 
it's considered that you are the first person who is rejecting it. All of those people that are ignorant, we don't even consider them of any importance because they don't know anything about it. Someone presents a research about some medicine and I would say, you know, it doesn't really make any sense. That person will think, what does he know about it? He doesn't make any sense. But then a doctor comes and he looks at it, he says, this makes no sense. So now that person will say, you are the first person to tell me this. Which means, first learned person in the field who is telling me something like this. All the learned people, they really agree with it. You are the first person. Whereas only a minute before that person, I rejected it, but of no importance, because it's not my field. So don't be the first one to reject it. Out of people of knowledge, you are the people of books, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time really is addressing Bani Israel, that out, out of Bani Israel, you would be the first ones to reject it, after you, when your generations would reject it, they would say we are rejecting it because our forefathers rejected it. Don't be the first ones of Bani Israel to reject this book. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا And do not take a trivial prize for my book. Bani Israel, when they realize that it may be a little difficult for them to follow Tawrah al billah it's too difficult, we can't follow this book, this book is too difficult. As in our language, billah, may Allah protect us, but yes, something that you hear this message one way or other, that when people would think that the book is outdated, the message is too old, is not as according to our time, is not according to our culture, is not according to our level of understanding, it's walayazu billah, it's for the, you know, those Arabs who didn't know nothing. For me, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me, make wudu, Allah should know that I wear socks. I don't need to make wudu. And really, you hear these type of things in different ways. So, Bani Israel, when they came to that position that, as I say, we may be in at this time, they started dealing with it in different ways. Three main things that they were doing at that time. One is, they would take money for changing the meanings and the words of the book. A person would be paid some money, you know, Imam, we will give you extra thousand dollars this month, but maybe you tell people that they don't have to come for Fajr prayer. So, they started getting bribery for changing the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting paid for changing the words of Allah and changing the book of Allah. That was one thing. Number two, the second thing they were doing is, okay, I'm not telling you to say that this is not allowed, but in your lecture you should put it in a way that people at least they understand that this is not the time to do it. Which means, mix the hak and bab. Mix the truth and falsehood. In such a way, that you just confuse people about it. This is the second thing they started doing. Confusing people by mixing things in such a way, that you are not saying this is haram, you are not saying it's not allowed, but at the same time present it in a way that people won't think that you have to do it. Yeah, there is room for you to do it. That's okay. You can do it. The third thing they were doing is, okay, don't even do that. MashaAllah, you're a good scholar. You're a very learned person. You're a God-fearing person. So you are not going to change it. You are not going to mix it up. And we are not asking you to, you know, mix up things like this. But at least, 
you don't have to talk about it. You can talk about everything in thing, so you don't have to say anything about it. Why do you have to talk about mixed gathering? Why do you have to talk about songs and music? Why do you have to talk about these things that we have been doing? Don't talk about these things. Tell people about how they can, will be entering the Jannah and how great they are. And tell them the virtues of the being, you know, simple people. And uh, just talk about simple things, but don't get into these type of things. Really, this is something that we find it everywhere. And these were the three things that the public of Bani Israel wanted from their scholars and scholars accepted it and they were going by that. What are the three things? Number one, they were getting paid to change the book of Allah. That's number one. Number two, Mixing the haq and batil. They don't change it. The person is a little, a little nicer. He's good. He doesn't change it totally. But the way he presents the meaning of it is he mixes it. In a way that people won't know how important it is. Or something is haram and people will think, you know, there is room to do it. So he mixes it. And number three, don't talk about it. Just leave it alone. You don't have to say halal, you don't have to say haram. Just stay away from it. Don't mention anything about this topic. So, these were the three things, and of course these are the three things that if people only know, really, if people know what imams go through, you would see that this is what is expected from a good imam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about these things now in these ayahs. That I said to Bani Israel, وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِي ثَمَنًا قَدِيرًا Don't take little price for my book. Hassan al-Dukhi rahimahu Allah says, ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا This little price, trivial price that Allah is talking about, is ma بَيْنَ الْخَافِقَيْنِ Is whatever is in this universe. That's a little comparing to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it doesn't mean someone says, you know, they were not paying me a small price, they gave me 10,000. It wasn't 50 dollars. So for 10,000 I should be able to do it. It's not someone in Khalilah. No. No price can be higher than the book of Allah and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today really the way people are selling deen. See, the thing is, Alhamdulillah, Qur'an is protected. So we can't change Qur'an, Alhamdulillah. But people write the tafsir. And in the tafsir, they change the meaning of the Qur'an, of the words of Allah, according to the need for which they are re- writing that tafsir, basically for. According to the person that is paying them to write the tafsir, the meaning will be there according to that. وَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ And do not mix the truth with falsehood. Don't keep on mixing it and presenting it to people in a confusing way. And many times, really, is not confusing. I'm calling it confusing, but many times it's not confusing. Something is haram. But the person presents it in a way as if it is halal. So public hearing it, they say it's halal. But if there is a scholar sitting there, he would go and talk to this imam, the sheikh, mashallah, brother. You're a mashallah, great sheikh, I like your speech. But you were proving that uh, singing and dancing and uh, when in the wedding, when they were having all of that mixed gathering, that was halal, you were proving all of that halal. So, I don't think that is correct. He says, no, I didn't say this. You remember, you see, I said this. I said it this way. So this is talbis al haqqa bil baatil, mixing the truth with falsehood. That he finds his way out of it. But he's really giving people a wrong message. And last thing that Allah mentioned, wa taktumul haqq, and do not hide the truth in spite of knowing. And this is unfortunately very common. Very common. The first thing Imam goes through when Eid comes. Eid get together. 
right there is a test for Imam's whole Ramadan and his whole deen. Whatever he studied throughout his life, his degrees, his certificates, and now his position of Imam, everything is being put to test by Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. People prayed behind him, then on the day, uh, last day of Ramadan, they gave him some good gift also, mashallah, they collected some good gifts for him, and they gave him gift for Ramadan, and then gift for Eid, and he leaves the Eid, Rasulullah, and mashallah, big shaykh, and beautiful lecture, and everyone impressed, and everyone hugs the Imam. Next week, brother, is our Eid get-together. Now the Imam will get up and announce it. He knows what's happening over there. He knows all the haram that will be taking place over there. He will announce it, he will approve it, and he will go there and join it. It's all gone. وَتَكْتُمُ الْحَقَّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ You are hiding the truth in spite of knowing it. You are hiding the truth in spite of knowing it. Don't you know this is haram? Did you tell them that this is haram? Didn't you... You have the guts to tell them that this is not allowed in Sharia. I can't say anything about it. And in fact, if you do it, I'm going to tell people that this is haram. No, that's too much. Hiding the truth. 